If you think raising healthy kids is a challenge, try Sea Stars. But researchers here in the Bay Area are taking on that challenge in the face of a dangerous environmental threat happening along our own coastline. So the spatulas are simulating water currents in the ocean. Um, so we don't want these guys in stagnant water. We want them up in the water column so they can eat. Marine biologist Raya Even keeps a close eye on dozens of swirling jars in what's essentially a giant starfish nursery, feeding and raising tiny larvae too small for the eye to see. We have several million um, on both of these tables total. The nursery at the California Academy of Sciences is part of a multi-site project to rescue a species known as the sunflower sea star from near extinction. To understand the urgency, all you need to do is stroll along our coastline. That's where Evans' colleague, Rebecca Johnson, helped document the sunflower star's disappearance more than a decade ago, likely triggered by a severe marine heat wave and disease. They were particularly hard hit, especially here in California and they really haven't made a recovery. Much easier to see is the environmental chain reaction. The vanishing sea stars normally prey on purple sea urchins whose population quickly exploded. That was deadly news for local kelp forests, the next rung down on the food chain for the hungry urchins. So urchins eat kelp, and so the loss of the urchin predator has released the urchins and allowed their population to grow and for them to eat tons of kelp, contributing to a decline of kelp forests along our northern California coast. The damage to the kelp forests and surrounding ecosystem is so significant, scientists decided to bolster the sunflower star population in captivity for now. It's crazy that these guys are gonna grow up to be these keystone apex predators, but they will. She says a team of researchers, including the Birch Aquarium at Scripps Institution of Oceanography near San Diego, are working to raise the sea stars. First, capturing sperm and eggs from a limited number already in captivity. Because the tiny larvae go through dramatic changes before they become sea stars, raising them is a tricky process. And then they'll go through a complete metamorphosis and they'll settle down to the bottom of the ocean or the bottom of my tables and they'll actually start looking like a sea star. Um, at that point, their diet changes completely. And any decision to reintroduce stars back into the ocean would also be tricky and probably decades away. But the debate is becoming familiar. There are already proposals to restore native sea otters that vanished from our coast after being hunted nearly to extinction, while labs like the Academy are also working with genetic variations of coral that could someday be used to repopulate coral reefs devastated by climate change. As for the stars... Well, this is a million dollar question. There are lots of regulatory hurdles and lots of things that would have to happen for that to be possible. But the hope is to increase the genetic diversity of the things that we're holding in human care and to have as many individuals in as many places to protect the species as we get toward being able to re reintroduce them. So for now, the spatulas continue to swirl and researchers continue to experiment with diet and environment. Preparing for the day, their aquarium-raised sea stars could return to become a key link in our coastal ecosystem. And just to underscore the urgency, really, of these breeding programs, scientists say average ocean temperatures are set to break new records, putting even more pressure on marine life like coral and sea stars. Hmm.